not asking you to do anything more than to look at him. These profound words of St. Teresa of Avila regarding prayer encapsulate a significant focus for Holy Week. While seemingly easy, this act of looking upon Jesus presents us with both an opportunity and a challenge. So fasten your eyes on him alone, because in him the Father has spoken and revealed all. And in him you will discover even more than you ask for and desire as we journey through Holy Week, reflecting on the mysteries of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. We have the opportunity to dig from the mind of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. St. John of the Cross expands upon the words of St. Paul, saying, They are so well concealed, that however numerous are the mysteries and marvels that holy doctors have discovered, and saintly souls understood in this earthly life, All the more is yet to be said and understood. There is much to fathom in Christ, for he is like an abundant mind with many recesses of treasures, so that however deep individuals may go, they never reach the end or bottom, but rather in every recess find new veins with new riches everywhere. No matter how much we have previously reflected upon this one week of Christ's life, No matter how many times we have attended the liturgies of Holy Week, there is a never-ending treasure awaiting us this week. However, this is also a challenge. In order to truly look upon the Lord, we need to have a living faith, a silent hope, and a detached love. Not all acts of seeing the Lord are equal. Père Jacques distinguishes between a true looking and a seeing of indifference. The fact is, one cannot see Christ and remain what one is. One cannot exchange a glance with Christ and not be overcome to the point of total conversion. If we are lukewarm, still attached to our comforts, if we do not profoundly fulfill the requirements of our state in life, it is because we have not exchanged a glance with Christ, because we have not really seen Christ. And that is what I would like to help you to do to lead you up to Christ, so that in the silence of your retreat, you could exchange a glance with him, a true glance, a living glance, and a real contact. Christ is a living being. A real living contact with Christ produces a radical conversion. Yet there were plenty of people 2,000 years ago who saw the incarnate Lord with their own eyes and remained as they were, unchanged. This same possibility exists for us. We can hear the word, but not listen. We can see the crucifix and not have this real look upon the crucified. Only by means of faith does God manifest himself to the soul. Faith helps turn our mere seeing into looking and perceiving. For example, consider the faith of the hemorrhaging woman in Luke's gospel. While the crowds press in on Jesus, Jesus asks, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. The crowds surround Jesus, but only one actually touched him. The woman had a great faith, which touched Jesus. He says it was her faith that saved her. We too must approach Jesus. We too must listen, look, and touch with this living faith. A real looking at the Lord involves a silent hope. When we hear the Passion narrative, for instance, there is a temptation to rest in the ways that God has spoken to us in the past and not be open to hearing the word anew. Hope seeks to see Christ anew, for hope always pertains to the unpossessed object. A silent hope is more than a silence of speech, but a quality of heart, open to seeing the Lord in a new way. St. Elizabeth of the Trinity encourages us, let us become silent, so that we may listen to him who has so much to teach us. Herein lies the challenge of this week. While the task of looking upon the Lord is simple, it requires this silent hope, ready to see and learn more. Coming into real contact with Jesus also requires a detached love. Love is not static, but a dynamic movement towards the beloved. 
Therefore, the one who loves wants to remove all obstacles blocking this movement. St. John the Cross writes, For to love is to labor, divest, and deprive oneself for God of all that is not God. He is speaking about a divestment of the heart, a willingness to let go, to detach and convert. But if we cling to something, we will resist conversion and ultimately resist this rush towards the all. When you delay in something, you cease to rush towards the all. For to go from the all to the all, you must deny yourselves of all and all. May these words of our Lord, spoken to a particular group, not apply to us. You shall indeed hear, but never understand. You shall indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are heavy of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should perceive with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn for me to heal them. A hardened heart is a main reason for someone to remain only on the level of hearing and seeing, and not go further to listening, perceiving, and understanding. The one who resists growth is attached to their old ways, and closes their ears and eyes from really perceiving, lest they change. Thus, as we cross through Holy Week, may we look upon the Lord with the eyes of a living faith, a silent hope, and a detached love, allowing His transformative grace to penetrate our hearts and lead us to a deeper conversion, understanding, and communion with Him. As a final note, we are presented with a remarkable opportunity to offer this week in union with Christ's passion, contributing to the sanctification and conversion of the world, so that we and everyone else may have this real, living contact with love. <music>